bring up a representative from Amachi, and uh, his name is uh, Thomas Shigekuni. He's a former internee of Amachi. He's also a volunteer at the Amachi Historical Society and serves as served as an interpreter, director, and legal counsel. He's also on the board of directors of the. Uh, sorry, can't read it. Uh, well, it's on the it's with the K -Roll, K Roll Retirement Nursing Home also. Uh, so, actually, I, before I bring Thomas up, just wanted to um, I was just reminded some of, some of you may be wondering like why 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 we're honoring uh, Amachi and Tuli Lake, and. Um, Basically, you know, we've always done, done the pilgrimage, you know, we just focused on Manzanar. So we wanted to open this up to the other camps. And we plan on do we plan on honoring two camps for each of the next five years, including including this year. And so we chose Amachi because <coughs> alphabetically, uh, the first the first camp and the last camp. So uh, <laughs> if you wanna, so Thomas, why don't you come on up here? Most of you probably don't know where Amachi is. Highway 50 goes from San Francisco to Washington, D.C. And Amachi is about 10 miles from the Kansas border. And if you folks think this is a desolate place, you ain't seen nothing. Because Amachi was owned by rattlesnakes before we got there. And, you know, they had these guard towers all over the place. And that was nothing but a farce, because nobody would dare go out beyond those fences. The rattlesnakes snakes would get you before the guards could shoot you. And I say the same thing here. Uh, they didn't need those guard towers. Uh, nobody's going to go over those mountains and uh, walk to Lockheed and Burbank and bomb the place. That's absurd. The guard towers were built to mislead the American public and showing them how bad we were. We're dangerous, sly people. And therefore, I think that they should build four guard towers here, one on each corner, and put searchlights on them, and keep them on all night, so these fishermen who come on opening day like today would, would get a little social conscience put into their souls. And, and some of these more uh, people that are more in, interested in a little decadence that go to Las Vegas, they had to have something to think about as they drive to Las Vegas. So therefore, we wanted to build a guard tower in Amachi, uh, but of course we don't have any money. But uh, at any rate, if you build a guard tower in Amachi, you got to put a 20 foot by 20 foot concrete slab 10 feet deep, and you got to build a guard tower with stainless steel because the local folks will pull them down with their tractors. And you know, they have what they call the Amachi, Historic, uh, Amachi Preservation Society, high school students in Granada, Colorado. And they go all over the state of Colorado talking about Amachi and the evils of the evacuation. And I talk to these kids all the time, 14, 15 years old, and they tell me that they convinced most of the people that the internment was bad, but there's a lot of them that don't go along with it. So the National Park Service has one hell of a job here of teaching Americans, and uh, this is an ongoing thing, and I'm really happy that the National Park Service is taking this place over. Uh, in Amachi, I think, I don't know about tu uh, here or Tule Lake, but I think Amachi was built to demean us and to destroy our spirits. And I'm gonna take all you folks back 58 years. You're the same age as you are now, but this is 58 years ago. You wake up six o'clock in the morning and you go to the bathroom. And uh, everybody eats the same thing, for, so everybody has indigestion. Yes. There are 12 seats in a row, just shoulder to shoulder with no partitions of any kind. And there are 10 guys waiting for you to vacate your seats. And five, five feet away, there are 10 people washing up, brushing their teeth, and 10 guys waiting for them to get out. So in this room, 20 by 20, you have 40 guys there, no air conditioning, 20 degrees below zero, all the windows closed. Absolutely chaotic. And we had to withstand that for a thousand days. That's how long most of us stayed in these places. And that was designed to demean us and to show us that we were nothings. And I think they did a good job. So a lot of you complained that the Nisei's are inhibited. Well, they did a good job on us doesn't want to see the, the local citizens with our sewer going through there with all these condoms flowing through there. So we decided that we're going to have all those condoms in camp. They gave us no furniture, nothing to sit on. 
So who, 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 who made that policy decision to give us condoms? And who made the rubber was a very rare, a scarce element during the barrack. Uh, five people to a room. You need some, I think you need some privacy of some kind to use condoms. And this was an impossible situation. So anyway, I wanted you people to know really what century at Fort Leavenworth. They went to Fort Leavenworth from our camp and some of them went to uh, McNeil Island, Washington. And uh, in 1943, the War Department wanted to find out how we felt about the draft. And I was in the eighth grade and uh, our homeroom teacher named Margaret L. Hopcraft from Albuquerque, New Mexico, a lovely lady, 40 years old. I thought she was old as a hill because a 12-year-old guy and 40-year-old woman looks old. But anyway, she wanted us to uh, write an article on the drafting. And I wrote that since we are not Americans, we shouldn't be drafted. And it, it's as simple as that. If, 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 we're not, if we are Americans, we wouldn't be guarded in this confounded place. And he was, he, he reminded me of uh, Heinrich Himmler. He wore small glasses, little round glasses, like Hitler's right-hand man wore these round glasses. Well, this guy wore round glasses. He combed his hair straight back and split down the middle. And he had these small glasses. And when I got into that room with Mrs. Hopcraft, he, he didn't even look at me. He was reading my paper, just like this. And then he, he says, who made you write this?